All right. Good afternoon, everybody. And welcome to our first ever virtual event, Cultivate. My name is Ken Taylor. I am the Regional Vice President for Higher Education and Nonprofit here at Collaborative Solutions. And I'm delighted to welcome you all today to our higher education panel. Uh, on behalf of our entire company, we're incredibly thrilled to have three amazing panelists joining us today, representing a variety of higher education institutions from across the entire US with different thought leadership and best practices and experiences that they're going to share with you today. So unless you've been living under a rock for the past nine to 12 months, uh, you're aware that recent events have driven higher education institutes to adopt digital processes and technologies and embrace new changes more rapidly than they ever have before. Whether it's due to COVID now, or maybe the emergence of online learning over the past couple of decades, or even preparing for tomorrow's student, like my own six and eight year old, who have been really growing up in the, the FANG era, and the FANG being Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, and Google, you realize that change is an imminent part of higher education and what to prepare for tomorrow. So today's discussion of our panelists are going to give you insights into the state of their own universities and how they're preparing themselves for the future by not only just leveraging Workday to move programs virtually, but also in how they're now streamlining processes and making the uh, decisions and data-driven decisions to ensure that their institutions remain agile and well positioned for the future. So before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping items. One, as you know, I think everybody's on mute already as it is. So uh, we are going to have a questions panel, as you'll see in the, uh, the, the, the window here on GoToMeeting. And you can also submit questions via chat. So towards the end of our uh, session today, we'll make sure that we get some time to answer those questions, which we can. And if we don't get to your question, we'll make sure that we do either myself or somebody else uh, who's a representative of Collaborative Solutions, get back to you with a response to your question. And then finally, this is being recorded, so we will distribute it to everyone after the session concludes. And please do share it with your friends, because I'm, expect I'm expecting a very, very exciting, engaging session today. So before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Collaborative Solutions. Um, and if you've ever seen me present or heard me present, uh, before you know where I love to start and this only takes me about 30 to 45 seconds but where I love to start is at the bottom of this image and the reason I do that is because just like your house the foundation is everything that matters so the reason that I point this out is because really at the core of collaborative solution success are people so you'll see that we've been able to earn numerous accolades as best places to work for women for millennials in the consulting industry and what this does it contributes to just one of our core values, people. But that also contributes to our other core values, such as integrity um, and excellence. So what that means is that when you have great people, when you have happy consultants on your team, you're able to produce something that so many uh, customers in higher education look for in a partner, and that is consistency, that's certainty, and that's a delightful experience. And what that delightful experience translates to is project success. And with that project success, we're incredibly proud of the fact that we've uh, deployed every single one of the projects that we've started to a success, which means we've never been removed from a project and we've completed everything that we've ever started. We also have great practices around change management. We have an incredible customer satisfaction rate. And I think one of the things that you're gonna see is today with Dr. Becerra, with Lori and Anne, you're gonna hear stories of exactly how they experienced that together with it. So if we move along to the next slide, I'm just going to go over our agenda really, really quickly today. So aside from the introductions, we're going to walk through a couple customer deployment stories from Marymount University, from the University of Finley, and from Penn State. We're going to have some discussion topics, and then we're going to close up with some Q&A. And I think what we're going to have is a very engaging one hour together. So why don't we move into introductions? We have so many great customer stories that we're thrilled to share with you today. And no matter where you are in your transformation journey, I know that you're going to find value in the insights that our valued collaborative solutions customers are going to share with you today. Uh, our panelists have various backgrounds and expertise. We're going to give you a firsthand look at the experiences that they had with us, but also some challenges that they faced and how work they helped them overcome those challenges. So quickly, before we move into the introduction of the panelists, just myself real quickly, my name is Ken Taylor. I'm, like I said, the RVP of higher education and nonprofit here at Collaborative Solutions. Uh, I've been in this industry for about 16 years myself. And the reason I've decided to dedicate my career to higher education is quite simple. 
I believe in the opportunity and equity that education provides in order for society to improve itself. So without further ado, let me introduce you who the real stars of this panel today are. I'm going to start first with Dr. Irma Becerra. Dr. Irma Becerra, she's waving hello, is the president of Marymount University, a Catholic university located in Arlington, Virginia. Dr. Becerra is known for expanding educational access for students and keenly targeting program, which meets societal needs and changing demographics. Her academic career, both as a student and as a professional, has blended mathematics, engineering, and systems thinking into processes in her studies, her teaching, and her administrative leadership responsibilities. A Cuban-born American, Dr. Becerra immigrated to the United States with her parents when she was just an infant living in Puerto Rico throughout high school. Those formative experiences ignited her deep-seated belief that, quote, no one can take away your education. She earned both bachelor's and master's degrees in electrical engineering from the University of Miami and went on to become the first woman to earn a PhD in electrical engineering from Florida, Institute, Florida International University. Welcome, Dr. Becerra. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. <laughs> Anne Wells is the director of finance and business planning at the University of Finley. Anne is responsible for the long-term strategy of operations and business planning. And I, I, I want to say is currently leading, but just recently completed her leadership of the Workday Student Go Live, which just went live just a couple of days ago. Congratulations, Anne. Thank you. And Workday Student, uh, Anne was also responsible for the implementation of Workday Financials in 2018 and has been with the University of Finley for the past seven years, providing vision for processes, design, and systems configuration. Anne holds a bachelor's in finance and an MBA, both from the University of Finley. Prior to education, Anne was in the banking industry for 10 years and is now excited to help the University of Finley emerge from the past 35 years of legacy systems technology into preparing for tomorrow's future. Welcome, Anne. Thank you. Finally, I'm excited to welcome Lori Yachtson, from Penn State. Lori is the Director of Talent Acquisition and provides strategic leadership uh, to a talent organization, talent acquisition organization that supports several campuses across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Lori's responsibilities include the hire of 9,000 full-time and 30,000 part-time hires every year. Lori has over 24 years of diverse human resources experience, serving in several significant global talent acquisition roles in technology, management consulting, and the financial services companies. Lori is a proud graduate of Penn State with a bachelor's in labor and industrial relations and returned in 2016 to implement a new talent acquisition organization. Welcome to this panel as well, Lori. Thank you, Ken. So now that we have introductions out of the way, let's get to the really, really fun part. So first, what we've asked each of our panelists to do is to provide an overview of their, each of their respective schools and to just give a quick overview of their Workday implementation experience of what Workday has done for their university. So, Dr. Becerra, why don't we start with you? Thank you, Ken. Um, okay, so a little bit about my journey. I started as the seventh president of Marymount on July 1st, 2018. And I came to find out during my first week on the job that I IT enterprise was underpinned by flat files running in a Sun microsystem server, which was physically located under our bathrooms. As you can imagine, as an engineer and a professor of management information systems, my hair stood on end. I called my board chair immediately and I said, Ed, do you know? shared with him these details, dead silent. You see, our board chair is a PhD in mathematics and twice a GovTech entrepreneur. So it was great that he shared my pain. So just two months later at a board meeting in October, I uh, just a few months after I had joined, I presented the business plan to go to work day. And by December of that year, we were starting our implementation with Collaborative Solutions, our implementation partner. So you can imagine, this is really uh, moving at, I'm going to say, faster than internet speed, right? At, in, if you consider an academic setting, and primarily because the business case was our entire enterprise, it's it's uh anything could happen you know the 
building the, the business case on the fact that we didn't have a sustainable enterprise for a knowledge organization. Our strategic plan, which is called Momentum, was unveiled in March 2019, and it calls for the university to achieve national recognition, double its current enrollment, significant improvement in our four-year graduation rates, and faculty and staff excellence. But essentially, in order for us to achieve this vision, we must improve our business practices while delivering an exceptional service experience to our students and our prospective saints. So this goal will only be achieved through an efficient and effective operation that is enabled by a state-of-the-art cloud-based technology that supports a high-performing culture. So our workday implementation is a mechanism for a cultural shift at Marymount. So it's not a technology rollout. It's really what will enable to shift the culture at Marymount. So it's similar to how it's performed at other organizations. We planned a multiple phase process to implement Workday. Over the course of time, we have and will be phasing out several systems that include colleague, an outdated HR payroll function, people admin, late CRM, star, Starfish, and Informer. And of course, that will be over the three phases of the rollout of Workday. We started the Workday implementation with the human resources, benefits, and payroll products, which is what you're seeing in the slide here in front of you, which we went live on September of 2019. Luckily, this took place right before the pandemic, because following our bold, audacious strategic plan, we have been in the process of restructuring our organization to have clear accountability and have what we call the right people sitting at the right seat of the bus. So our Workday HR implementation enabled a complete restructuring of the entire university, which is something that we really wanted to do and, and it came as a reality and part of the Workday uh, HR. So as you know, there is a lot of competition for talent in the DC region, or you may imagine. So we are excited about the ease of being able to hire through Workday. And it really would have been impossible without this modern technology to hire all the faculty, adjunct professors, and staff that we needed to accommodate our planned growth and expansion. So because of the pandemic, we pivoted to remote education and remote operations in March, like most of, uh, uh, most of you listening in the conference. And with our HR systems in the cloud, we could still hire effectively and handle anything related to HR from a remote environment. Between then and in March and today, we have the, in August, we repopulated our campus. We have had 86 new hires, all the neighbor enabled by Workday HR. So the need to work remotely during the spring highlighted the importance of implementing the finance module. We started phase two of our Workday implementation in the middle of the pandemic in July this year. Our finance accounts payable, accounts receivable, purchasing, and grant products through Workday are really in the process of being implemented. And we are uh, planning for go live in April. Students will start in February and will be a true game changer. So in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has more than proven why we need to move in this direction. On the student side of things today, students have to wait until midnight for on registration day to sign up for classes because our current system can't support the load of system registry during the day concurrently with other system demands. So that's not a supportive modern environment for our students. With Workday, that will be a thing of the past. So that's in a nutshell and our not only our journey and where we are today, but where we're going to be in the next few months and looking forward for the future. Back to you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. So next, I'm going to ask the same question of Anne. Anne, can you give us a little bit of an overview of the University of Finley and what work they've done for your institution? Yeah, so um, I'm very excited to be here um, and to talk about Finley and Workday. 
uh, very similar story. Um, you know, about four or five years ago, the university was kind of sitting around the table grabbing for data, and we really couldn't find our, our primary data source. We couldn't find our system of record. Um, we kept getting information that wasn't matching, you know, to other pieces. So um, for, for us, it wasn't necessarily a bandwidth issue. It was where is, you know, where does your data live? And, and how many systems do you have that you think are your primary sources of data? So um, we've been using the same uh, enterprise resource system ERP since 1985. And um, I will tell you that's, that is younger than me, but not by much. So um, I'm happy to see it go. Uh, we had a significant need to modernize. Uh, we'd outgrown that, that system. Um, it just wasn't handling what we needed it to do. It was very elementary. Um, and we really hadn't put much energy into keeping it modern um, or, or, you know, developing modern processes um, for our end users. So, you know, we're talking mainframe um, operating system. And, and so for, for a younger generation hiring them, it was really challenging to tell them to hit control C, you know, if we put as like Oregon Trail, we all played Oregon Trail at some times. That's what we were operating in. And so, um, you know, hiring was one of those things where it's like, I can't sit a, a 24 year old in front of this computer and expect that they're gonna know what to do. Um, so from a, a process point of view, we were really looking to update our, our processes. Um, we also knew that University of Finley and, and like most higher ed, we liked our freedom. We liked to kind of be customized. And so one of the things we really needed to do is to establish um, embracing the pre-configured um, processes for HR and finance um, that Workday offered. So um, the University of Finley, uh, we also wanted to provide parents and students with a modern experience, right? You're, you're sending your student off to college and you want them to be able to text their admissions counselor to um, you know, log into something and have single sign on and be able to access things um, and get everything in one place. And so we really wanted to deliver that because we felt if, as private education, if you're paying that price, you really expect top notch experiences. Um, and so that was another piece of it. So um, I, my dates are all off here. I can't even remember where we started because as you mentioned, we're mid uh, go live with student, but we did go live with HDM and finance in 2018. Um, we've been live on those two systems for two years, and I, I'll echo what uh, you know, Dr. Becerra said. We would we would not have been able to function in this pandemic in our previous environment. Um, just the fact that everything was behind a firewall and we would have had to get VPN access. Um, I can't imagine what that would have looked like. Our HCM and finance offices they were able to deploy you know, remotely almost immediately without any assistance, and, and that's huge. Um, and to kind of touch a little bit more on there, you know, we were able to do a 50% reduction in our AP um, cycles, 50% um, reduction in our monthly close, a 67% reduction in time spent preparing our financial statements, HR identified 60% reduction in their time spent preparing for iPads. So we really have, experience the value that Workday delivered. But again, the most important thing that we were looking for was the single data source. And to be able to follow that transaction through from hire um, into finance and be able to you know, use those roles um, is, is really what we were looking for. I will say one of the places, and this is our challenge that the university of felt, uh, fell down on, was our change management, right? So we implemented the system re relatively well. We did not do change management relatively well. In fact, we didn't do it at all. Um, and so we did have an implementation partner switch between HCM and finance, which is pretty common. Um, and we chose collaborative solutions. And the biggest um, reason we chose collaborative was for change management. And we made a significant investment in change management for student. Um, and we're already seeing the, you know, the difference that we're experiencing with our Workday implementation than we did with our HCM and finance. Um, and so, you know, for, for those out there that are that are looking at deploying, change management is a huge piece of this um, mm -hmm. where, where we learned our lessons throughout it. Uh, in terms of student, as you said, we just went live with our first milestone. So we're really excited about that. Um, you know, and I can, can kind of go into some of the opportunities that Workday students providing for us now or later. It's up to you, Ken. What do you? 
I think we're probably going to get to that as part of the questions uh, during the panel. So if you'd like to keep everyone on the edge of their seat, feel free to. All right. <laughs> um, like, you know, kind of Dr. Becerra, we, we did use Workday during COVID. Um, we had to create additional um, leave plans. We utilized it for budget reductions. Um, unfortunately, I would say it also helped us, you know, in our um, personnel decisions, you know, both before COVID and during COVID, um, that we had to make some hard decisions and we were able to work day, uh, leverage Workday um, in HDM and finance because we were so efficient at that point. So um, you never want to, you know, see that happen, but it is what we're in, where, where we're at. I think one of the things I, I wish we would have had, you know, with the CARES Act funding, we were able to do an amazing job at using Workday Finance to help track our CARES expenses and be able to report out on those. It's very exciting to be able to use projects to do that. Um, on the student side, I wish I had it, you know, we're still operating our legacy system. And so, uh, you know, managing the CARES Act for student was not as easy as it was on the expense side. So. I look forward to having Workday student to be able to help with that CARES Act funding that we'll probably never get again. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Anne, for that overview as well. And Lord, let me wrap it up with you here on introductions. So can you tell us a little bit about Penn State? And then we'd love to hear about your experience with Workday as well. Sure. So thank you for having me today. Um, I thank you, Collaborative. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, so I am going to talk about Penn, Penn State. We are Penn State, so hopefully you've heard that before. Um, as we talked about earlier, um, you know, we are a public land grant uh, research university in Pennsylvania. Um, typically, we're known for what individuals call our uh, main campus that's headquartered in University Park, PA. But we are actually one university which is geographically dispersed. We have over 22 campuses throughout the Commonwealth. Um, and from a student perspective, we have over 96,000 undergraduate and graduate students enrolled in the university. Um, from a TA perspective, we service all of those campuses um, from a hiring perspective. So from a, a full-time employee count, we're a very large employer. We have over 31,000 full-time employees across the Commonwealth. Um, and in any given year, we're typically hiring uh, around 9,000 full-time and upwards of 20,000 part-time. So our TA organization, um, part of why we engaged Collaborative was to uh, roll out Workday Recruiting. Uh, we needed new technology. We had a legacy system, like it sounds like my, counter, my panel counterparts had as well. Um, it was homegrown, it was about 20 years old, um, and it wasn't allowing us to move into an active recruiting model. Um, to kind of go back, Penn State went through an HR transformation in 2017. So we went from a decentralized model to a centralized model, and we also incorporated um, and implemented an HR shared services organization. At that time, we rolled out uh, Workday HCM, um, but due to the large change that was going to be occurring to our university, we felt as though we should wait to ro roll out Workday Recruiting. Some of the challenges that we had with that was, since we had an older legacy ATS, it didn't integrate with Workday HCM. So essentially, talent acquisition had to be an organization that was performing data entry. Um, so we, we had a, our ATS would post a job and candidates could apply, but we had no way of actually getting those hires into Workday unless we did it manually. Um, and, and that's not the type of TA organization we want. Um, so one of the things we did was decide to roll out Workday recruiting. And we um, got permission to do that in 2019. So it's really allowing us to transform our organization um, from being tactical and data entry into an active recruiting model. Um, it's improving our candidate experience. Um, it's providing transparency in our process and making it more efficient. And um, as um, my, the, my fellow panelists had said, it's providing us data and analytics that we didn't have previously. Um, you know, we are, it's um, been very beneficial, um, but it has been a big change. One of the things that 
we were anticipating is that we would be rolling out in March 23rd. Um, many of our end users were also going to be uh, learning a new financial system, which was going live in July. So as Ann talked about, HCM with uh, OCM, um, Organizational Change Management, was a big part of this project as well. Um, we had a nine-month project plan, um, and we uh, delivered on time and on budget, but interestingly enough, um, in the middle of our go live COVID hit. So, you know, we were not prepared um, or weren't planning for, I should say, to go to a rem remote deployment. Um, we were in the middle of our data conversion when we got the stay at home order from our governor. So we had to quickly pivot um, and make sure that we had a project plan in place that we could, you know, move forward on remotely. Um, it was a very successful go live. There really were no, it was very smooth. I think that's a testament to collaborative and their partnership with us, our project management, our project leadership. Um, you know, it again was a, we went live on March 23rd. Um, and I think in terms of our uh, change management philosophy, we knew that we needed to get in front of our stakeholders really early in the process so they were well prepared when we did have to um, go into a remote, remote environment uh, to be able to work efficiently and effectively in the system. Wonderful. Thank you, Lori. So we appreciate everyone's insights and introductions to your universities and, 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 and learning more about just yourselves personally. I think each of you brings a very compelling story and experience and not just working with collaborative and workday but in the impact that you've made on each of your respective schools so we appreciate one um your experience and expertise and two your willingness to share that with with our with our audience today so let's move into a couple questions that we uh asked you um about we've kind of touched on but we're thinking about now going forward in terms of how we share with the audience so really for every single one of you we'll start with you dr becerra but really what industry challenges are top of mind for you and how are you leveraging Workday to solve those key challenges? And we touched on this a little bit there in the intro, but let's take a few minutes here for each of you to really expand upon that a little bit more. Yeah, thank you, Ken. And uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier in my uh, journey, uh, Marymount University is, we are about 4,000 students and we are located in an area that I'm going to describe as hyper competitive. Uh, there's a number of universities in this, uh, it, it's a whole region, right? The DC, Maryland, Virginia. We're in Northern Virginia, but there is a, a number of, of really wonderful universities. And, and, and we actually compete for students from the region, from the nation, and from the world. So uh, I think for the, the opportunity uh, to be able to better understand you know, from the data that we have, like I can't wait until I can walk into my office and then I have a dashboard right on my desk that lets me understand real time predictive analytics about everything that we do. What kind of student yields and retains at Marymount? What are, what are our programs that are growing at, or facing increasing competition? Uh, what are the programs that are increasing in cost? What kind of student is likely to support the university as an alum? Today, any type of predictive modeling effort uh, has a six month lead time just to build the data warehouse that is the basis for the modeling effort. By the time we tease out all these predictors, the conclusions may already be obsolete because everything keeps moving. So I can wait until I have the tools. I, I'm, uh, imagine my background, my research background, knowledge management and business intelligence. You know, I, I just can't wait until I have the tools that I need as a university president to make the right decision timely rather than feeling that I'm flying this plane without instrumentation, right? For those of you that are uh, looking at uh, making um, in, uh, information, in, uh, using information, data, knowledge to inform our decisions, it's very important that, that we have that information, that data, that knowledge at our fingertips so that we can be agile, pivot, and really 
uh, again, uh, in areas like where we are in a hyper competitive area that we are making the right decisions so that we continue to serve our students and provide exactly what they're looking for. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, and, and being being local to you as well and having grown up in the area, I've known Marymount's uh, brand and, and school for, for quite a number of years and I can attest to one, the hyper competitiveness of the area, but two, certainly you know applaud your achievements and I can't wait to see what uh, comes of your story as well with Workbase. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Ken, thank you. And the same question, and maybe this is where I kind of held, held you back on student on purpose a little bit, because I knew we may be able to touch on it a little bit here and how you're going to love the work they do to solve some of the key challenges that I know are top of mind for you as well. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I could go on all day, so just cut me off when, when you need to. Um, but, you know, one of the things, again, that we're trying to do is we're trying to be the most efficient that we can, you know, with, with budget dollars and everything, we have to be as efficient as possible, but we can't sacrifice that student experience, you know, and the students deserve um, a really good modern experience, you know, in 2020. So one of the things that we're really looking forward and it can't come soon enough for us is the deployment of Workday Student, um, you know, and, and it's just so exciting. So some of the things that, um, you know, you talked about bandwidth in terms of student, student self-registration. We here at Finley actually didn't even allow students to self-register. So they actually had to meet with an advisor. And it's part of, you know, it's part of our core of, you know, producing meaningful lives and productive careers and advising um, and having those faculty touch base with the students and meet with them face to face and talk about their future um, during these uh, registrations. But what we were finding is Students were really, you know, and faculty were really just getting bogged down with the system they were using. You know, they were having to kind of balance two systems and go back and forth. And so one of the things that were really um, the most significant accomplishment that that I think that we've, you know, leveraged Workday for is for students to be able to self-register. And, and I would say, you know, collaborative change management was a huge part of that. We had to build the right inroads um, with faculty. And I think COVID helped. I mean, in this case, COVID did help to understand how a remote environment has to happen. Um, we also, um, you know, we were expecting some faculty resistance, but in reality, we didn't get that. Um, one of the greatest requirements that they gave us was that um, implementing, stu implementing student self-registration was that the implementation had to support the intention of having a meaningful advising experience. Um, in those conversations. And so with Workday, um, it, it's going to allow us to do that, you know, take out the um, administrative piece of advising, building a schedule, and really focus on the meaningful, what do you want to do in graduate school? What do you want to do after you graduate? Um, what do you want to do with an internship? So th those were um, really a lot of how we kind of leverage change management to be able to make that um, policy change, really. We also, um, our students, we had no pre, uh, prerequisite enforcement. So with Workday Student, um, we're going to be able to do that. Again, we had kind of a prereq nightmare, and you can only imagine how that is for the student experience. You let them in the class the first week, and then all of a sudden you're like, well, you haven't met the prereq. Um, and so we're really excited um, to be able to leverage that. We also had no waitlist process, and our process was paper-based. So again, we're talking about the student experience here, and I kind of just listed four things that you would think are pretty normal in 2020 to have, you know, accessible to students, which, which weren't. Um, and, and it's not that they were providing value either. The processes weren't providing value. So our, our waitlisting consisted of a request to add paper that they carried around from faculty to advisor and finally to the registrar's office. Um, and so with Workday, we also were able to get that policy um, with our faculty changed um, and, and we're implementing the Workday waitlist and, and students. So um, all these things, you know, that we started working on six months ago, which now with COVID, you know, thinking about them in the future, we have to have them. We have to make these changes. Um, and, and without Workday, I, we wouldn't be able to do that. But more importantly, I think, is, is the change management piece of that. You know, we had to touch into the emotional side of these decisions. And when you're in a project, it's really difficult as a project, anything, functional lead, project manager, 
to tap into people's emotions on the other side of, you know, as faculty or advisors or students. Um, and having that change management piece really, really helped us move, move these policies forward. So um, those are just a few areas, you know, um, we're really looking forward to the, the data analytics that are gonna come out. You know, we talked about it and, and um, just having the power of one, you know, having the ability to follow that student from, from application to graduation, is, it's just, it's hard to imagine right now, um, but mid working, you know, building the student system, you can see it now. And you want to make sure that the integrity of the data that you're feeding into the system is being carried through. Um, and so it's really excited to be on midstream of a student implementation. So great. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. And Lori, I know, uh, like so many other of our uh, large organizations that we work with, Penn State has quite the recognizable brand, but COVID hit as well. And so when you kind of take those two things, but then you also move that into a narrower focus of the higher education industry as well, I'd love to think about it from that lens and, and how you're leveraging Workday to solve these key challenges that you've had to take on. Sure. So you're right. Penn State has a brand. Um, I think where we're focused from a TA perspective is on our employer brand. Um, so I like to say that we're essentially a, a talent up position startup organization, but we're obviously in an institution that is definitely not a startup. Um, you know, and what Workday is allowing us to do is, again, to, to move from that tactical uh, organization to really a strate strategic, proactive one. So our talent acquisition team wants to be proactive and searching for passive talent, high potential, high performing talent. Um, our legacy system didn't allow us to do that. Um, you know, and in terms of our employer brand, we, we have, we're really striving um, to kind of change the perception of recruiting at Penn State, both with candidates and with our hiring managers. Since our team has been traditionally a little bit hands off in the process, um, you know, we have a lot of work to do there. So can it, candidates traditionally um, have, you know, thought that if they apply to Penn State, their resume goes into a black hole. Because we just really didn't have the resources or the technology to be able to interact with them. And Workday is allowing us to do that now. Um, candidates um, have, there's a transparency is, that is there. They can see where they are in, in the process. Um, previously with our ATS, we didn't, um, we weren't able to tell candidates that um, they weren't being considered for a position until the position was closed. And that could be, say, nine months later. So candidates didn't know where they stood. And that can be very frustrating. And we want to get those candidates back and show them why Penn State is someplace that they should consider working. Um, we also want to be proactive with our managers. Um, again, they haven't had a lot of consultative partners from a talent perspective in the past. Um, so, you know, they've been faced with sort of doing recruiting on their own. And that's the um, expertise that we bring to the table. Um, and that's going to make the process more efficient and effective, not just for the candidate, but for the manager. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that as well. Sure. So we have one more round of questions for you before we get into Q&A. And we're, uh, if we take about two minutes or so per, per response, I think we'll be right on track. But by gosh, I'm not going to cut you off if you're on a roll. So. Feel free to answer these, which I think are going to be really just great um, lead-ins, actually, probably to some questions. And I know we have a couple coming in, so um, would love to make sure that we build upon that even more. So, Dr. Becerra, you know, you mentioned something which I found to be really interesting. And you said recently you've made 86 new hires. And in an age where so many companies are having to scale back, you're scaling up. So just taking springboarding off the 86 new hires, just that data point alone. What opportunities do you see moving forward from Marymount University? Thanks. Um, well, Kenny, it's interesting because um, so Marymount is a relatively young university. We're 70, we're just 70 years old, which is young in university years. Uh, and we've always had a very practical focus. As a matter of fact, you know, our tagline is learn with purpose. 
one of, we are one of the first universities to require students to have take on an internship for as a requirement for graduation. And our top degrees, nursing, physical therapy, cybersecurity, they're very reflective of the workforce needs of the, of the region, the nation, and the world, and really where careers are. I think we just uh, underwent a really significant analysis of our of our current existing programs, and we have uh, we're going to be launching a, a curriculum a growth plan for the next three to four years. So, in fact, it's been very important to understand the cost for each program and in depth, and because we didn't have workday in place, this effort was monumental and I'm just looking forward that in a couple of me weeks we will be able to do this with regularity it's not something that you have to wait and do it every five years because we are seeing the environment change so much in terms of what are the student preferences what are they looking to learn for example we just found out that in terms of adult education which are we've had this year record growth in terms of graduate students, record growth in transfer students. In the middle of COVID, while many universities are retrenching, we're seeing record growth in some of our areas. So for us to understand what are students' interests, what are they looking for, we're looking also to build a lot of flexibility, ramps into graduate degrees, stackable certificates. So just to be able to stack certificates into graduate programs and to be able to keep track of financials so that we can quickly assess is this a program that is addressing customer needs or are, are we you know i have a thing as i don't like to leave students on the table right and part of it is making financially informed decisions and uh, i think that uh, workday and thankfully our partnership with collaborative which is helping us uh, drive Workday in a, in a very efficient, on time, on budget matter. Uh, I think this is really the heart of our strategic plan, momentum, and will help us gain the momentum that we need to achieve our roles of national recognition, double the size of our student body, move into research intensive, uh, so we're planning to be our two, and all of these within the next five years. So Workday will be the vehicle to enable us to get there. Thank you. And everyone always loves props, so well placed. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you the same question. I know that you've mentioned 50% reduction in AP cycles, 7% improvements in other business operations areas as well. You have a background in banking, so you know you take that, but you also have experience now with student. Um, it seems like there's so much opportunity for Finley. Where, what, what focus areas are you thinking about in terms of how Finley can continue to move forward? Yeah, I mean, if I haven't said data enough, that's that's kind of where where we're at. Um, we can't get enough data, and that comes from now having that. You know, we've dipped our toe in the data with HCM and finance. We know what we can get. Um, and so we can't wait um, to get that out of student. And so one of the things, you know, the opportunities that we have that we have never had before is the ability um, to run engagement plans from application through um, graduation. And um, for those of you that are familiar, and it's the same one that's actually used in the HCM portion, um, the workday engagement process really has a strong data analytics behind it. Um, and so um, currently, you know, we one off emails from departmentals. We don't have a good database that we're drawing from. You know, the audience is always different. If you ask one developer to another to pull an undergrad list, you get two lists. So um, one of the things that we're really looking forward to within Workday is the ability to engage with students. We all know um, in the same manner that they're used to from application. We all know it's, you know, harder to retain a student and we all want to retain them once we get them. Um, and so the communication piece is something that I'm personally looking forward to as an opportunity with Workday. Um, 
you know, you can get total delivered, total click, total opened, all those statistics that you want to know when you send a communication out, was it effective? Um, and, and the fact that it's the same platform from application through, you know, our registrar's office and financial aid, I'm really looking forward to the fact that we can share services and kind of move people from one place to another. And they have, they're working on the same platform. It's not something you go to, you know, marketing and you have to learn a new platform. So, um, the analytics piece that's going to come along, you know, from an engagement point, but really, you know, throughout the whole thing, we talk about program of study, the ability to drill in um, on a student from, you know, on a program of, stu of study and see all the students and see their net tuition revenue um, and assign that, you know, to the instructor load. I mean, it's really exciting, you know, the same same place to do that analysis. Um, because you're you're in that one system, so it's, it's hard to believe at times. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. And so, Lori, you joined Penn State in 2016 to implement a talent acquisition organization. So now that that's here with Workday and just across Penn State in general, what opportunities do you see moving forward for yourself with respect to uh, talent acquisition as it impacts Penn State? Yeah, so we're, we're really focused on data and analytics, too. Um, given our prior system, we have hired data over the past couple of years, but we don't know where that started. So we don't have true data from when a talent need was discovered and what happened along the way. So what's really exciting about Workday Recruiting is now we're going to have that data and see the story that it's telling us. Um, you know, we know where we were and we know where we're, where we want to go. And now we'll be able to gauge that um, with Workday. Um, we'll be able to see, you know, what is our true time to fill um, our search? Are our sourcing channels effective? Um, you know, are we getting our first choice in terms of applicants when we give them an offer? Um, we're going to be giving um, uh, surveys to both candidates and managers to make sure that our process is meeting their expectations and if it's not you know we'll be able to pinpoint where we need to pivot um, and I think the other um, thing that we're really excited about is additional technology um, you know Workday has their their partners and so now we're able to explore um, a CRM to put on the front of Workday recruiting that's really going to give us a positive and personalized candidate experience and be able to use some technology that'll get candidates through the process and can be, um, give us some candidate pools that can be done um, through automation and not necessarily a recruiter having to you know, physically reach out to a candidate um, and be able to schedule interviews through the system. So you know, we're focused on, again, are we want our recruiters to be out there engaging with people, engaging with candidates and the hiring managers and let the system take care of the rest. Fantastic. Well, thank you all for sharing, again, your experiences and, 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 and your thoughts and your ideas uh, for moving forward. We've had a couple questions come in. So I'm going to kind of farm these out as the questions seem to uh, apply to each of you. Uh, so I'm going to start first with Lori. And I know when, as we've gotten to know each other, you know, you've mentioned about the fact that a new um, talent acquisition or in HR strategic plans are right on the horizon as well. So this first question is, how has a remote environment impacted your talent acquisition strategy? And this might be very timely as maybe you're doing a little bit authorship around this as well. Yeah, um, it's actually been good for us from a TA perspective. Um, I mean, there's some challenges. I, this is an uncertain time, so I think there are some candidates out there who aren't sure about making any type of big life change at the moment. So from a candidate perspective, it's, you know, a little uncertain. Um, I think one of the other challenges just from a TA perspective is traditionally we would bring candidates to campus. And, you know, that's, to me, the biggest selling point is having someone visit the campus um, with their um, peers, you know, look at the surrounding area if, they have, if they're not familiar with Penn State. Um, but one of the positives is that um, traditionally Penn State has been a little late to adopt the, the um, philosophy of perhaps having remote workers. And now we've been forced into that. And it's really shown the university that you can be productive um, as a remote employee. 
And I think it's pushed our hiring managers to be better managers because they've had to now assess how do I, um, from a performance management standpoint, um, you know, assess whether my employees are de delivering the work that they need to do and they've figured out how to do that. So from a TA perspective, it actually really opens up our candidate pool. We no longer need to be focused on finding candidates uh, where we are. We can go seek candidates across the U.S. and potentially at some point uh, in the world and really focus again on you know, the talent that we're bringing into the university. I think once you do that, when you up your game from a potential and performance perspective, it changes um, not just uh, the way that you conduct business, but it really engages the employees you have on staff um, and sort of uh, challenges the status quo and, and challenges them to be better as well. Oh, wonderful, thank you. And I'm gonna ask you this next question. And the question is, my, my organization is currently considering a deployment, a remote deployment in today's age. Uh, What's your biggest piece of advice to ensure success? I think uh, that's a good that's a good question. Um, and I would have had a different perspective the first time around than the second time around. Um, in the, I will say I am so impressed with collaborative and not only collaborative, but just like um, Penn State, we were not a remote environment. So I'm impressed with our folks and their ability to adapt. Um, in a world, you know, some of them have been here for 35 years along with the legacy system um, and their ability to adapt and, and work through this project remotely has been amazing. I'll, I'll kind of start with that. Um, things to consider. The first time around, I, I would have, you know, it's, it's different, but now I, I think change management for us is a game changer. You know, we don't have the staff, we don't have that expertise on staff. And so they have to evaluate whether you have that or you don't. And in a small school, um, you know, 675 employees, we don't have that. We don't have training. Um, and so those two pieces for us during Workday Student, and, and really we should have leveraged it during HCM and Finance, um, those are a game changer for us. They, they fill that void that we don't have. And frankly, we don't have the time. Um, and the ability, even if, if we did have that, we'd have to then talk to those people internally about functionality, you know, with Workday. With like with collaborative, we get the best, best of both worlds, right? They know the functionality and they know change management and training and the best processes to go there. So um, for us, that's a game changer. That's really something I, I would consider for anyone um, is whether or not you need change management um, if you can do it effectively, if your functional people can do it. And you know what, it's it's not that they can't do it, it's just that they don't have the time. You're asking them to do two jobs most likely anyways. Now you're asking them to manage change too. Um, and so I, I think that's really something to consider for any deployment. Fantastic, thank you. Um, and Dr. Becerra, I love this question for you. And it is, how is your school, and you've touched on this a little bit already, um, how is your school preparing for the student of tomorrow and to meet their expectations? Uh, well, we like to ask students uh, all the time, how are we doing? And uh, for example, when we pivoted to remote education in March because we all needed to, um, it, it was a necessity, correct? And students, you know, we told them don't don't return to campus after spring break in March, and we carried on. Uh, really, I'm going to differentiate online versus remote education, which is what we were doing more remote education in the sense that we were still uh, synchronous, the same student to faculty ratio. So it's different than what people think about online, massive online courses, which is many hundreds or thousands of students to one faculty member. So we remain same classroom size is just like a, a virtual classroom and, uh, and pretty much synchronous. But students told us by and large, uh, our Marymount education is uh, we pride by being very personalized, individualized education. And students told us that by and large, it didn't work for them and that they didn't perform as well in the classroom, that there were too many distractions and essentially that they didn't want to continue learning remotely. So we knew that we needed to come back to campus and 
and welcome our students back to campus in a face-to-face -face slash what we call high flex, hybrid flexible environment. So, uh, so we did that, and uh, that that was a challenge. Uh, we needed to continue operating remotely while we prepared the campus uh, to come back uh, on a face-to-face, -face, high flex environment. And the result of that is that we have seen our, our, our enrollment remain stable. And like I said, certain sectors like transfers and graduate students, we've had record number. And I think it's because we listened to the students, we asked them and they told us this is what works for us. We listened to them and then we prepared the campus to return to campus. So I think having that infrastructure that it enables you to Stay connected, I think what Anne described as engage with your student, understand what their preferences are, and then be able to be agile and pivot quickly to provide that to your students is really ultimately what is going to help you retain and graduate your students at, that actually you welcome at your university. So I, I think it's increasingly important that, uh, that we pay attention, and I think we have the information at our fingertips, but without an ERP like Workday, it's just hard to get to it. And that's what I'm looking forward, and I know it's going to be different. I can't wait. I'm like, Ann, I can't wait until we have that student module, because it will give us the right, the information, the granularity of the information that we need to be able to best serve our students. Fantastic. And so we have about three minutes left. So I'm going to ask a quick 30 second lightning round question um, before we wrap it up and, and give everybody uh, um, our, 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 our overall thanks to you all. But quick 30 second responses. And this I love this question as well. What's the measure by which you plan to gauge your success in the next two to three years? And I'm just going to go across what my, I see on my, my, my screen here. So Lori, I'm gonna start with you, then Dr. Becerra, then Anne. Lori, how would you gauge your success within the next two to three years? So again, I go back to the data and analytics and the candidate and manager experience. So as we look at um, you know, how we have changed that and moved the needle, um, our time to fill um, and our acceptance rate. If, if those are steadily increasing, um, then we're gonna be very happy. Great, thank you. Dr. Becerra. Well, for us, in our strategic plan, one of the important goals is that we enable a high-performing culture. So Workday is the instrument that will, that will help to enable a high-performing culture and effectively transform our culture. So it's, it's not only an IT uh, enterprise, it's really a culture shift enabled through Workday. All right, and bring us home. I know. So I would say data, but here recently I've been having, I've been reminded by students and their excitement for Workday on how much they're looking forward to this system. So if they're happy, we're happy. You know, happy students, happy life. Um, we're putting them in a system that they could go out and get a job with. It's, it's a big deal. And so I think the student response um, to us implementing the system will really gauge our success on, on Workday students, so. Awesome, well, thank you. Um, I know I speak for myself personally when I say this has been an absolute treat. We are privileged, we are humbled that you would join us today and, and speak with our audience here. Um, I know we probably didn't get to every question that was asked, so if you did ask a question, please know that somebody from Collaborative or myself personally will get back to you with a response. Um, if we can connect you with either Lori, Dr. Becerra, or Anne, I can speak personally, and knowing that they're engaged, they're happy to connect, and they're active in the Workday ecosystem and community as well. So in wrapping, I just want to simply thank Dr. Becerra from Marymount University. I want to thank Anne from the University of Finley, and I want to thank Lori from Penn State. Um, who've openly shared their stories and their experience. So in addition to these three great uh, leaders in the Workday community, uh, we do also have other collaborative clients who have graciously offered their time um, to meet up in our reference room, our virtual reference room as well. So please be sure to check back on the Cultivate website if you'd like to book any meeting. If you want to meet any of our experts, please feel free to do so as well. But again, um, I can't thank the three of you enough for sharing your time, for sharing your expertise and your experience with us and wish you all nothing but the best and safe and healthy returns back to campus when we can do so. And um, with that, thank you all very much. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Bye, Lori. Bye, Anne. Bye. 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 Nice meeting you. Nice yeah, to meet you. You too. <laughs>